Hey there, Dr. Dave here with another Mindstorms EV3 video tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at using data logging to keep track of the values of various sensors on the robot, as well as looking at driving the robot with acceleration and deceleration. So let's start by looking at a case here where we're driving the robot forward at constant speed. What we've done firstly is included a data logging block. So if we go down to here, it's in the advanced blocks area and this block down here, so we've dragged this up to here what we've done is we've turned the data logger on we've selected the mode here, we'll go to this one first to look at the number of samples we're going to take per second well we're, we're using the samples per second mode and this indicates that we're doing 10 samples per second once we've set those up, then we can add various sensors. So I've added a sensor for the motor, measuring the number of rotations for motor B and motor C, as well as measuring the power, current power for motors B and C. We can add various other sensors if we wish. So for example, if I wanted to add a sensor to keep track of the gyro angle, I'd do that, making sure that I've connected to the correct port. Alright, so once I've set that up, so I'll just get rid of this one for now because I don't need it. Once I've got that set up, I'm going to drive the robot forward at power 70% for five full rotations. I'll wait one second and then I'll stop the data logger um, and then obviously the program ends after that. After running the code with a constant power, we then connect the robot and create a new experiment and we can import our, the data from the data logger. So to do that, we upload, press the upload button in the bottom right hand corner, again making sure that our robot's connected. Select what data file we want, so we will speed test, and we've got the most recent one. Import that, and then close that window. Now to look at the the data in a table, we click on this button here, the data set table button, and we can see our data down here. Now just to highlight a bit better, we'll change the style of some of the colour of some of this data. Right, so we change the colour of the data that we've got on the graph up here. And if we look at these two in particular, these are the two, the bottom two rows here are showing the power. So we can see our robot quickly gets up to 35% power after 0.1 second and 36% on the other wheel and after 0.4 seconds it's up to 74% which is a little bit beyond the power that we're aiming for the 70% power it eases off a bit and then we go at around 70% give or take 1% for the next second or so and then after two and a half seconds we've got a rapid deceleration and indeed we can see by these two values we've got this sort of jerky movement at the end there okay so a couple of areas of perhaps slight concern here let's just change the scale a bit so we'll change that so that it's full scale this area here is of particular concern, that sudden deceleration and that jerky movement here. The other bit of concern is this part here where we're going beyond the stated 70% power. Now in terms of the rotations it's very difficult to see from this picture but what we'll do is go across and change that so that switch from full scale to auto scale for both of those. And with this we can see the rotations not a particular smooth start here and again a fairly um, spiky spiky end there so again two areas of concern for our movement the initial starting of our movement and the final stopping movement so that's what we'll aim to improve in our in our next demonstration so to improve our code, what we're looking at doing for the first part is actually address the initial movement. So introduce some acceleration at the beginning of our movement. 
So effectively what we do, this part's pretty much the same as what we had earlier, set up our, our data logger block. But in this case, we're gonna start off our power at 10. And then in, inside of a loop, we're going to incrementally add 10% to the power each time we go around the loop with a 0.2 second delay um, between each increment. We do that for 10 times. In fact, I changed that to seven, so we only go up to 70% power. And at that point, once we exit the loop, we stop the robot, introduce a one second delay, and then turn off our data logging. The previous code still had an issue with the sudden stopping, the sudden deceleration of our robot, which resulted in a fairly jerky sort of movement. So in this piece of code, what we, as well as having the acceleration section in here, if we scroll across, we have a portion of code where we move at a constant speed at 70% of our power. So we do that for three full rotations. Then finally, within this block, we decelerate the robot. So we're starting off at our 70% power, subtracting 10 from that, feeding that into our tank block, delaying by 10 seconds, and then looping back to the beginning of this loop and progressively taking another 10% off until we're down to 10%, at which point we stop the robot, scroll across a little bit further, one second pause, or wait and then turn off our data logging and that's the end of our code. So now if we look at the data from our data logger for that final acceleration deceleration code we can see a couple of points here. So we've got steady increase in power until we reach our 70% plateau. We've only got a small spike there, I think it jumps up to 71%. Uh, goes fairly steady over that constant period and then we can see again a fairly steady decrease in power. A couple of other things to note here, we've got a much smoother transition here in terms of our, our when we're accelerating and a much smoother transition here when we're doing our deceleration. So it results in much smoother motion um, and much less likelihood of our robot going off path.